Thanks, the gentleman, gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Thank you, questions. Mr. Chairman. I have an hour or two of questions. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that to you. Uh, I, I would uh, just like to make a couple of points. One is we have a $2.4 trillion deficit over the last 365 days, $2.4 trillion. We're not at war, we're not in a healthcare emergency, and uh, we're not technically in a recession. We're not. $2.4 trillion deficit. $35 trillion in debt. And so as, as we push forward with discussions about continuing resolution or appropriations, let's just recognize that we can't afford all of the things that we're spending money on. And we're going to have to make some choices between things uh, we want and other things that we want. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, there's been a lot of discussion here. I'm, my, my friend, Mr. Massey, spoke earlier about some things. And, I, I mean, we're going to pass this bill through the House, hopefully on Wednesday. And, uh, and it'll go to the Senate, and the Senate will do what they do, and that's nothing. And the reason the Senate doesn't pass appropriation measures is because it gives the majority leader, Chuck Schumer, all of the power. It's intentional. He, he's a power-hungry individual. Uh, he, his oath to the Constitution means nothing to him. And so by not passing appropriation measures, it means everything gets negotiate, negotiated out through his office. It's not the way we want to do things because it diminishes the role uh, of the people's elected representatives, but it's the way it's the way he does things. Uh, fortunately, if you believe the polls, he won't be the majority leader, and I do believe the polls. I think the Republicans will will control the Senate next year. And and I'm going to say this: all this discussion about 60 days, 90 days, 180 days. Ultimately, there's an election coming in 56 days. 56 days from now, the public's going to make a decision. You're going to they're going to choose a Republican president or a Democratic president, a Republican House or a Democratic House, a, a Republican Senate or a Democratic Senate. That's, that's what's going to happen in our democracy. And I would tell you the likelihood, whether we do a 60, a 90, or 180-day resolution, let's say we do 60 or 90 days, is that whoever wins, whoever wins simply doesn't do a whole lot and, and we end up with another 90-day continuing resolution. So why not just go ahead and do 180 days? This is what happens in presidential election cycles. You, we, we, we've had the continuing resolutions, and then someone gets elected president, and they ask for another continuing res resolution so that they can then get their people seated. And, and I think that's, in all likelihood, what, what will happen again. So, so why not just go ahead and do 180 days and take the potential shutdown off the table? Take the shutdown off the table. 60 days puts you at November the 29th, which gives us maybe, maybe 10 days after the election. If we do 60 days, maybe 10 days. What's going to change? The Senate's not going to do anything after, after, after the election. You've got Thanksgiving break in there. Uh, if you go 90 days, it puts you December 29th, the Sunday after Christmas. So... So the Dems have got this argument about 60 days or 90 days. Ultimately, we're going to end up with 180 days of continuing resolutions, I believe. So let's just go ahead and do 180 days of continuing resolution. Let's take the shutdown off the table so the American citizens don't have to worry about that over Thanksgiving or Christmas or, or January or February. And then if we come to an agreement, if we can come to an agreement that recognizes that we can't afford to spend as much as we're spending, then hopefully we can get something done. Unfortunately, it would be an omnibus and not, not individual appropriation measures. But uh, I, the 180 days is not a reason to be against the piece of legislation. If, if you run the calendar, the 180 days is not a reason to be against the piece of legislation. And if you're for illegal immigrants voting in this country, then you should stand for that before the, the American citizens in November. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield. Chair, thanks, the gentleman. The gentleman yields back. Um, I do want to thank our, our witnesses for their testimony and their endurance. Uh, and this panel 